This question appeared in IES paper, question 2A, derive Slitsky equation and interpret it. So let's try to do that. So by definition, the compensated and uncompensated demand function would be equal at the point where the nominal income is such where which is uh, sufficient to have a required level of utility. So I'll start with that point. The compensated, compensated is your Hicksian demand function, which is the function of prices and utility. And uh, the uncompensated demand function is this guy, your Marshall and demand function, which is the function of prices and income. Uh, so this is compensated demand function. This is uncompensated demand function. And by definition, they are equal at the point where the nominal income is such, which is sufficient to have a given level of utility. By definition, the compensated and uncompensated demand functions are equal where nominal income is such that which is required to attain a given level of utility. So in this recording, I'll be mainly talking about the derivation of this and the interpretation of this. So if you want to learn more about uh, the substitution effect and income effect, I have made the videos. I'll uh, put their link in the description. Have a look at that also. You will understand it more. So this recording is basically to answer just this question, derive Slutsky equation and, and interpret it. So I can write my income as the expenditure also. So I can write in place of M E. That is your expenditure function. So whether, I mean, since P1 X plus P2 Y is equal to M. So whether you find out income or you find out expenditure, that is the two sides of the same coin. An expenditure function, as you know, that is a function of prices and utility. So again, for the duality also, that is how to find out the indirect utility function, expenditure function. I made a video. Uh, please have a look at that also if you want. So differentiate with respect to Px. So you have Px here, that is simple. So this is just del xc by del Px. And you have Px here, you have Px here. So the change in X is going to come due to the change when PX is going to change here and when the PX is going to change here. So the, the sum of these two changes. So it is del X by del PX plus. So when I want to find out the change in X due to the change in this PX. So this is imbibed in E. So I need to differentiate X with respect to E first and then E with respect to PX. Right, that's a chain rule. So I can write what? I can uh, write, just rearrange this. And I can take this to this side.
minus del e by del p x. So del x by del p x, x is what? Just the Marshall and demand function. So it is telling you if the price of X is going to change, how is the demand for X is going to change? The Marshall in demand for X is going to change. That's the slope of the Marshall in demand function. That is nothing but the total effect, right? This guy is nothing but the total effect. So you have what? This is. the slope of Marshall in demand function or total effect. Okay. What is del x c by del p x? Del x c by del p x is the change. I mean, how the compensated demand is going to change when p x is going to change. So that is nothing but the uh, substitution effect because while finding out the compensated demand function, your utility is being kept constant. So when you keep the utility constant and then find out the change in demand due to the change in price, that is nothing but the substitution effect. So this is the slope of compensated or Hicksian demand curve. Or this is called the substitution effect, right? Now let us try to interpret this guy. Your minus del x by del e into del e by del x. So the one interpretation is this: that how how the change in price is going to affect the change in demand, keeping the expenditure levels constant. So that is one interpretation, right? So this is what the income effect is. It shows how the change in demand for X is changing through the necessary changes in the expenditure levels. Through the necessary changes in the expenditure levels. Now let's look at the another interpretation. Right. So you had this guy. Right. So just look at Delhi by Del PX first. Well, if price of X is going to increase, your expenditure is going to increase. Right. But you are calculating this on the Marshallian demand. So when you're calculating this in the Marshallian demand, the problem arises is that in the Marshallian demand, nominal income is kept constant. And when price of X is increasing, expenditure levels are increasing. When your income is kept constant, how are these ex extra expenditures be available to you? They won't be available to you. So the only response for the increase in price, which is left out is to reduce the consumption of X. Let me repeat this once more. Delhi by del Px greater than x greater than zero would mean when Px is going to increase, your expenditure is going to increase, right? Now, keep, of course, I mean, assuming that you're going to consume the same, that is when you're going to look at the thing, you'll be looking at only those things changing, everything else being constant. So when Px is going to increase, expenditure is going to increase. But while you are calculating this in the margin and demand, these extra expenditures, are, extra expenditures are not available. So nominal income is being kept constant. 
So when this extra when these extra expenditures are not available, so the only response which is left out for the increase in price of X is to reduce the consumption of X. And that is the reason you have the minus sign out here. So when Px increases, E should increase. But these extra expenditures are not available. Are not available as nominal income is being kept constant. as nominal income is being kept constant in Marshallian demand. In Marshallian demand. So the only response to the increase in price of X is to reduce the consumption of X. is to reduce X. So that is the reason you have uh, the minus sign out here. This is what is your income effect, right? Also using envelope theorem, using envelope theorem, daily by del px is just x. So you remember your expression which you had? You had this expression now. So can I write this expression as this? Del x by del px equals to del x c by del px minus del e by del p x is just x and del x by del e in place of e i can write m that is your income or expenditure they are one of the same thing this is the way sletsky equation is written in most of the books right this is what your sletsky equation is so you have the total effect you have the substitution effect and you have the income effect so that is what This is the simple derivation and the interpretation of the Slutsky equation. So substitution effect is what? So uh, when the relative prices are going to change, keeping the purchasing power constant, how is that going to affect the demand? That is what the substitution effect is. So you keep the purchasing power constant, you keep the level of utility constant. And then you see the change in demand due to the change in price. And the substitution effect is extremely simple. It is very, very clear in its approach. You consume less of the commodity whose price has increased. You consume more of the commodity whose price has decreased. Simple. Income of X says what? The thing about it, when the price of X has decreased, let's say, so your purchasing power has increased. Huh? So now keeping the your relative price is constant, whatever is the change in the purchasing power, how is that driving the demand? That is what the income effect is, right? So, so the, the change in demand due to the changes in purchasing power, that is what the income effect is. Uh, okay, let's, let's think about it this way. So for example, you have the normal goods. Okay. You keep this expression in your head. Let me just also copy it down.
So you have this expression. Let's talk about normal goods. Normal goods. Beta, as far as substitution effect is concerned, that is very, very clear. Price of X has increased, consume less of that. Price of X has increased, consume less of that. So substitution effect is always negative. I mean, the relation is negative. So when the price of X has increased, you're demanding less of that commodity. So substitution effect is always negative. Right. Okay. Now think about it. But uh, X is greater than zero. If price of X has increased, your purchasing power has reduced. X is a normal good. Your purchasing power has reduced. Your income has reduced. So when your income has reduced, you will demand less of that commodity. So in that case, your uh, your uh, your del X by del M, what should be the sign for this? Repeat that once more. Price of X has increased. Substitution effect says consume less of the commodity whose price has increased. So that is the reason substitution effect is negative. Now, price of X has increased. Your purchasing power has fallen. Your purchasing power has fallen. It means your income has fallen. Your income has fallen. It means you will be consuming less of that commodity. So the relationship between the X and M is positive. So income has fallen. X has fallen. Income has fallen. Demand for X has fallen. So that relation is positive. So when X is zero, del X by del M is zero. So income of it, because of this minus sign, your income effect is negative. So you can say what? You can say what? Substitution effect. An income effect reinforce each other. Reinforce each other in case of normal goods. In case of normal goods. Right? Shelly. So this much you can write in your answer. Huh? Okay. Thank you, Vita.